Hi, my name is Peter, and uh, hope you're having a good day so far. Or, as Duolingo has taught me so far, hola, buenos dias, uh, mucho gusto. Yo hablo inglés, mostly. Now, today we're going to look at this big sketchbook I just bought. It's a big honker, and this is what I was assigned to buy for my new drawing class at school. I haven't even done anything with it yet. The first assignment, just in the first week, along with reading the syllabus and stuff, is just to decorate the front of it, and I might make a little decorative uh, intro page on the front here. So that's what we're going to do today. And also, look at some cool new pens I got. Put this down here. These three pens from Ben Walsh Design. Now, you might notice the style is similar to one I got a few months ago, and it's this one here, which I keep capped because, yes, it still smells faintly of Skittles. It was this pen, if you remember how it looks. It's a nice pen, I liked it. And there's just a faint, wonderful, fruity Skittles scent in there. And he sent some more pens. Thank you, Ben. Of course, check out the uh, website in the description. I think some people in the past uh, video pointed out what type of script this was, and I looked it up and uh, learned a bunch about it and then promptly forgot. But it's some sort of Irish thing, I think, and it says stuff. So go check them out. And these pens are apparently also uh, custom tuned by Jose Munuera. Pen tuning, custom nibs, custom grinds. So check this guy out also. These pens not only look really cool, but uh, you can see here this is a form factor is reminiscent of the Kawiko Sport in the sense that it's nice and small, can fit in your pocket. But then when you uncap it and put the cap on the back, it's big enough to hold. Now take a look at the nib and notice where it becomes extra special. Do you see something different there? I'll give you a closer look, just a sec. I need to switch the lens here to the macro lens. It's a stacked nib. I'm sure some of you have seen this before, but I haven't. It's definitely an interesting concept to put two nibs on top of each other. You can see here where the second nib is somehow attached on top of the base nib. And you can see there's a B for bold. That is so interesting looking. Two nibs creates a different type of tip. We'll see how it works in a second. Let me show you the other stacked nib one. It looks slightly different. This one has a bunch of ink on it, so. This one is stacked to create a slant in the other direction of the tip, which is interesting. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. It almost looks like it's too much nib and that this shouldn't work. But as we'll see, it really does. Here's a non-stacked nib for comparison. Just regular old pen suddenly looks so thin and flimsy. All right, let's put the rest of the lens back on. So I got three pens here today, two of them stacked nibs, one a regular, more regular nib anyways. This one here, the, the one that's like a Kuiko Sport, can only fit uh, cartridges in it. It can't fit a full piston converter because the body of the pen is so short. I tried, okay, I tried. So that's why this one writes in blue, but it's still extremely satisfying because I didn't bother putting black ink into a cartridge. And for some reason, blue is the most popular color to put in cartridges. I don't know why blue is like a fountain pen ink plague of color that I can't get rid of. This is the double nib where it's slanted forward like the prow of a ship almost. And it feels amazing. It's kind of a sharp, crisp feel. 
as you can see, it writes great, nice, bold lines. I think you can flip it over too. Oh, look, nice, sharp, little crisp lines. I think that's the, one of the whole ideas that you can write it with it different ways and get different lines. Whatever's going on here, it's very satisfying. And because there's two nibs stacked on top of each other, there's not, well, actually there's a little bit more flex and give than I expected. Huh. It is a very stiff experience though, which for me is perfect. I like that. Everyone's allowed to have their own preferences when it comes to the stiffness, flexibility, and uh, I don't know, there's other special words for it in fountain pen worlds. Here's the other double nib. As you can see, this one's slanted a little backwards. It's got black ink in this one. Let me get it running again. I filled it up a few days ago. There we go. So writing this way, since it's slanted backwards, gives you a little bit more of a fine line. But if you flip it over, that's when you get the bolder lines again. I feel like I might draw with this one, do my fine lines, nice, crisp, wonderful. It feels nice, scratchy in the best way. Right, and then if I have any areas I need to color in, I can flip it over on its back and do this. Oh. It smells like metal. It smells like satisfaction. Of course, we should try out the single nibbed one too. Oh. It feels the same as the previous one, except lighter. Maybe it's just because the pen is smaller, but it's still a wonderful experience. Slightly more flexible, obviously. But this is not a bad pen. All of these feel amazing and I don't know. I don't know, maybe it is the pen tuning that makes a difference here. These are these are pens when which when I start drawing lines with them, I just don't want to stop. As you can tell here, usually I don't do this many test little sample lines, but it just feels good. It feels really good. All right, so I forgot we're supposed to be decorating the beginning of my sketchbook for school. We put the lids back on all these. I've got pens everywhere. So as far as this sketchbook goes, I'm a little bit apprehensive that I bought maybe one that I won't like. It says here, Field Sketchbook, 160 pages, premium acid-free, 110 gram, pale cream paper. That's my first apprehension. I usually like it when it's just like straight up white paper, but you know, I might survive with the pale cream. It's not that big of a deal breaker. Secondly, the paper, I, I got this one instead of other paper because it said it's 110 gram. Uh, and some of the other ones I looked at at the store said they were like 80 or 90 grams. So I thought heavier is better, right? That'll prevent less bleed through. But I think maybe sometimes that just means it's like, like thicker, more mushier or something. I don't know. It doesn't necessarily mean the stuff bleeds through less because this is feeling like some really kind of pulpy paper. I'm afraid that if I write on this page with a fountain pen, like a really nice, generous fountain pen, the ink is gonna go straight through, so I don't know. This first page is gonna be a test page and an introduction page. I'm gonna do a little test scribble right here and see how much it bleeds through. See how much it feathers also. I don't know if you can tell, but there is some feathering almost in individual fibers. Let's look at the back. That's a good sign it didn't bleed through almost at all. I'll probably still only use one side of each page because there's so many pages in here. I just, I have to decide right now if I'm gonna go get another sketchbook or if I'm gonna carry on with this one. Because I've got to commit or not. I need to be happy with my choice. I know for the whole semester. I'm gonna go get another one. Just, I want to be completely happy. All right, I'll continue this video in a second when I get back from the store. That means I have to put on pants.
All right, we're back, ready for round two with a few more options. I just got one of every single 11 by 14 size spiral bound sketchbook that they had. Hopefully one of these works. The reason why I didn't get any of these the first time through is that the nice, totally blank uh, hardcover on this one appealed to me. And that's why I got it, right? Nice, totally blank. I like that. But um, all three of these are not so nice in that way. And I don't enjoy this trend of having art already on a sketchbook, right? But it seems very, very common. It's like, I know what sketchbooks are for. You don't have to put art on it. Uh, I just, this one is the worst, maybe. This is very tacky to me, but let's, I'm gonna, let's feel the paper. I can finally move, I drank all my coffee. All right. This paper is at least white, instead of cream colored. It's a little thinner, but it feels less pulpy. This one is called a sketchbook, 110 GSM, 89 GSM. Also white, even thinner. I feel like this one might bleed too much with pen. It's a sketchbook. Now mixed media, I feel the most hopeful for 190 GSM. GSM, I don't really know what that means, but some, some way to measure how heavy the paper is. This paper is nice and thick and also not pulpy. I feel like mixed media for me is the way to go since I want to use ink and a lot of ink and not have it bleed or feather. It's regrettable that it has this, this cover, but it'll be okay. All these other sketchbooks will still come in useful someday. It's, it's never bad to have too many sketchbooks and pieces of paper. It's only bad to not have enough. All right, let's test it out. See if it's a little better this time. Oh yeah, look at that, so much more nice and crisp. Hmm, I like that a lot. And no bleeding at all. I could probably draw on both sides of these pages. So I think the mixed media option is the best. Still plenty of paper there. Mm. Say it, don't spray it. Um, well, let's start drawing. These double nibbed or stacked nibbed pens. Once again, make sure you check out the links in the description. I'm gonna put links to the Gravitas pens. Ben Walsh Design made these. The uh, the guy who tuned the nibs, Jose Munuera, Munuera all right? And uh, anything else that seems important. Let me be sure to ask if I didn't link something you're curious about. Piece of hair in my mouth. So I started out with a little bit of sticker bombing to customize, personalize the front of the sketchbook, which, by the way, thank you to anyone who sent some stickers in the past. You might see some of them here on the front of the sketchbook. Uh, customizing the front of the sketchbook really was the main assignment. Uh, not No real drawing assignments here. This is just like a little first week thing, like I, like I mentioned. The next drawing assignment will be the first real uh, you know, getting into the class thing. But the first assignment was just customize the front of your sketchbook. And then really what I'm the main, my main drawing here today, which you'll watch in the video, second part of the video is, was kind of actually optional. The, the professor said that you can, if you want to write something on the second page, I'm like, okay, I want to write something and draw something and spend several hours doing it, I guess. Really, what I'm most concerned about is <laughs> that I might be setting the standard too high here on my first page of my sketchbook, right? But I'm trying to push those thoughts back down far away. Look, it doesn't matter. In, in fact, it's good, okay? I'm trying to challenge myself. I want to challenge myself. It's good to st set the standard high. In fact, I don't think, I don't think it works that way anyways, because... You know, I'm doing my own style of abstract, kind of formless, non-representational doodling here anyways. So I'm, maybe it's good that I'm getting it out of my system here on the first page. And then I don't know what the next assignments will be like for the rest of the 
rest of the semester, but maybe I won't be able to draw like this for the rest of the sketchbook anyways. I'm excited to see what the rest of the sketchbook will look like, the future pages. So I, I put a lot more effort into this than maybe I was supposed to because the professor uploaded an example of what she did for one of her sketchbooks a year or two ago. And it was just like she had like a little collage of some some fabrics and textures of different things on the front. And then pretty much just wrote her name and the class on the second page. Uh, so maybe, maybe I did go a little bit above and beyond, but it's okay. It's fine. And I like how it looked and I had a good time doing it. And I will say these pens, uh, thanks again to Ben for sending them. It felt amazing. It worked so good. Th that's really the best feeling you can get from a pen if it just works. Sometimes I like a pen. I like how it feels in my hand. I like how it looks. And but sometimes it is just a little bit of a chore getting it to write or something. Even if it writes okay, it writes good. But sometimes in the back of your mind, your hand starts getting a little bit tired or something. You've got to press a little bit too hard or you got to hold it a certain way just to get it to write. Nothing felt like a chore about getting this pen to write. It felt like a dream. I hardly had to, like this one, I could I could just let the pen rest on the paper and the weight of the pen itself uh, would, would write if I just kind of held it and, and dragged the weight of the pen across the paper, if that makes sense. There was no like pressing needed at all. I think it must be the tuning. Uh, I Some of you probably know what pen tuning is. I guess it's I should look it up, you know, as a guy that uses a lot of fountain pens and is still an amateur because there's so much to know about fountain pens. That's the fun of the hobby, I guess. I kind of like slowly, I, I'm, my, my slow descent into the madness of fountain pens, I'm enjoying it. I don't know everything there's to know about it and I kind of like it that way. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a million and one things to, to learn about them. So that's why it's a fun hobby. Eventually... I think I actually did get some of those, um, maybe a uh, pen tuning supply so I can get into it myself. Cause some, I, someone mentioned it and then I Googled it and then I bought some supplies. I bought like some very, very fine grit sandpaper. Oh, I have a stack of them right here. And the, the, these sandpapers are so fine. Some of them just feel like random pieces of colored paper. I have the piece of paper in front of me that describes what each one is. It says um, they're called precision abrasives. Hmm. Precision micro finishing lapping sheets. Uh, developed for the electronics industry, but can be used to flat lap or polish just about anything. Carefully graded aluminum oxide particles that are electrostatically coated onto high strength polyester film backing. And um, yeah, they're like color coded. Some of them, the very, very, the very roughest ones feel like they have a slight texture. And then the very smoothest ones, uh, <laughs> they just feel like smooth pieces of plastic, but I think they are actually used for pen tuning, I guess. Maybe that's what people like Jose Minuera do. And if you go to places like, I've, I've been to one pen convention and you can see people there. They have like their little uh, tool bench all set out and they have their magnifying glasses set up on little articulated arms that they're looking through with their lights. And they have all these cool tools set up and they probably have these special uh, types of, I don't know what they do, but they're going at the pen nibs and some of these are measured in microns and like one micron is 14,000 grit because more normal, normal sandpaper, I guess is clo getting closer to like 120 grit, which is a hundred microns. And that's the type of sandpaper you can kind of feel the roughness of, but then the ones you can't really feel the roughness of it's getting down to like, 10, 1, 0.3 microns. 0.3 microns, 
60,000 grit. I think I have one of those pieces of paper. It feels very smooth, but I guess I can still do something with a nib and make it more effective and work better. And then I have some pieces of like brass, like sheets of brass, I guess you can use to stick between the tines of a nib to help work it or something. I don't know. Obviously I need to do some research before I start messing stuff up, ruining a nib. Or maybe I should just get a, a couple of nibs because you can order nibs online, spare nibs, something to experiment with. I feel like that's how I learn and then just kind of start tweaking them. Maybe I need to do the hands-on learning along with the research and, you know, watch some YouTube videos to see how it works. The problem is some of my nibs work fine. Maybe I need to get some of the nibs that I think are broken and don't work very well and see if I can get them working well. Kind of revitalize, rehabilitate, renovate some nibs. I don't know. The, the, also the problem is I have so many pens that work so good. It's hard to justify putting effort into a couple of them that don't work good, but it would also feel great to have all of my pens working amazingly. That would be a good feeling just in the back of my mind, knowing that I could pick up any of my pens and they would work incredibly. Just a whole arsenal of wickedly working perfectly performing pens yes anyways i'm very happy with this drawing how it turned out i'm mean, pretty happy i mean like 90 percent happy i mean i think i should get an a on it uh but <laughs> i'm not the one grading it it's, it's a weird feeling uh and i love the pens definitely go check out the website these are the these are like the the second time Ben has sent me pens now for free. So definitely thank you. I definitely love how colorful they are, even though I don't usually go for the colorful pens. These are a beautiful exception. See y'all later. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to subscribe. I've got to get to a million, a billion, a quadrillion. See you later. Goodbye. Love you. Take care.